Beep, 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 breaking news this just in. And it's hip to be square with the Seiko 6138 0030 Kakumi or Square Eyes. And this uses the 6138 dual register chronograph movement. And this has just been received. It was advertised as running. This is one for my own personal collection and to wear. It was advertised as winding and running okay and all the rest of it. And as you can see, it is indeed running. Uh, running okay, of course, is a, um, a subjective term. <laughs> uh, certainly not by my standards. It's running far from okay. But it looks largely original. Uh, hands, dial and uh, the tacky ring and everything else which is nice winding also questionable it's it's not particularly doing that uh, especially well there is definitely something amiss in the hand winding section the day date setting is not a hundred percent either the date quick date change is okay the rapid day change is not okay this has been running now for about four hours, as long as the hour counter on the chronograph has been running. And having been wound with the case back removed, wound with a screwdriver on the mainspring barrel, it has currently lost about two minutes. So it's definitely not great. Definitely not great at all. But it looks quite nice, all in all. And... Over on the back, first thing I did, and the first thing I always do when I get a watch with a screw, screw back case that I bought for myself, is I try and open it myself by hand, by turning it. And this opened quite easily, which typically, under the camera, it's, it's now not doing. And I have only tightened it back on by hand. Ah, there we go, look. And I always check that because if a case back opens very easily by hand, like that, upon arrival then you can pretty much guarantee that somebody has actually looked inside the case back previously and either hasn't had the correct tools to retighten it or has just not retightened it very much and that can be a bit of a red flag alarm bell situation if the listing pictures didn't show the movement in this case, it looks relatively clean from the outside. So this is a fingers crossed kind of situation that it's actually going to be reasonable internally. It's, it's uh, got a lack of amplitude. It's running about 160, 170. And it's, um, it's got a noticeable beat error and a noticeable loss in timekeeping as well. And the case back isn't bad. As you can see, there are minimal scratches from somebody ham-fistedly opening the case back, which is nice because it's very common to see these 70s Seikos with seriously chewed up and scored case backs where somebody's used a cheap Jaxa type or the two prong, twin prong type tools and have slipped and they've chewed up the edges of the, of the keyed slots and they're uh, score marks across the back where they've tried to open it. This one's looking pretty good So I'm pleased with that. The movement as you can see is Reasonably clean looking. That's uh, doesn't look bad. You can see the balance swinging away there. You can hopefully tell By the amplitude that it's not exceptional But that's not a problem just now. That's something we can address a little bit later We've got some interesting things going on and right here you can see let me get a pointy bit of peg wood to point with right here you can see we have got an automatic winding bridge screw which looks fine right here you can see as a replacement for an obviously missing or damaged automatic winding bridge screw what we've got there is an eccentric uh, screw uh, a screw with an eccentric washer head which clearly at some point had been used to secure dial feet to something. Um, certainly not a Seiko that I'm aware of, quite possibly a Swiss watch, I don't know. Uh, but yes, interestingly, we've got, we've got a, um, an eccentric type screw securing 
the auto winding bridge on. But it does work. There is not excessive play in the auto weight, which is good. And another thing I did notice originally, I'll just show you, was when I first received it, before I'd even looked at it in detail, I could see that the movement was not buttered up to the inner bezel as it should have been. And if you shook it, there was some up and down movement. I was half expecting the movement ring to be missing. Thankfully, that wasn't the case. But what is missing, you'll note, is the spring, which goes around the movement ring. Very, very common on these. And what I have done as a temporary measure is taken this old knackered ring um, from, which was around the case back, as it should be. And this is way past being useful in any, in any means whatsoever, and more like plastic than rubber now. And I took that and chopped a piece out of it, and I just used that as a spacer to make sure that it did actually seat correctly, which is why that's in there like that. So I'm going to, I'm going to remove the oscillating weight because it goes without saying that the first thing that this is going to get is a strip down and a good clean and inspection and rebuild. And we are also, while it's in the case, as I always do, I'm going to remove the automatic winding bridge. And it's then ready to uncase and sit straight into the movement holder. I will need to find another screw for the automatic winding bridge to replace this bodged um, eccentric uh, dial foot holding screw and there appears to be some magnetism in there as well so those two just stuck themselves together so I'll lift that off let's have a look at the pole levers they were working they were winding nicely and they look pretty okay they don't look bad looks very dry in there um, distinct lack of obvious lubrication but it doesn't look particularly worn. A little bit of wear on where the pole levers slide back and forth here and here, which is not uncommon. And I'll pop the reduction wheel out, which looks okay. Have a look at the teeth on that. Oh, they look pretty good actually. They don't look bad. I've seen. I've seen uh, much, much worse wear on the teeth of these, much worse. And as you can see, we've got the chrono pushers working acceptably well. And it does start, stop and reset and resets back to zero nicely, which I will show you once it's out and in the movement holder. So, and it looks reasonably clean from here. There's no obvious brassing and scoring around the edges of the uh, auto, uh, of the chrono bridge and of the train wheel bridge, which we'll normally see when the bearings in the uh, auto winding works have gone and the oscillating weight is rubbing as it rotates. So that's a good sign. I'm going to pop the pushers out the pushers which are devoid of um let's pop the movement ring out as well while we're at that uh, the pushers which are devoid of o-ring seals as you can see uh, which is never a good thing so obviously somebody's had these out before and they haven't replaced the seals so let's pop the stem out and the stem does have a seal, which is typically flattened and probably rock hard and brittle. That's okay, they'll all be replaced. Okay. And drop that out of the case. 
and we've got a beautiful looking dial uh, the crystal also is not bad on this one it's got a couple of little chips and some very very tiny marks but on the whole it's in very good condition the tacky ring is a bit scored up and beat up the case is a bit marked and I think it might have had a light polish in the past but it's not bad it's not bad overall and relatively clean so I suspect at some point this was cleaned although perhaps not quite as well as it could have been uh, at some point in the not too distant past or either that or it's been used for a little while and then popped in a drawer because it perhaps wasn't performing as well as expected and apparently it had lived in a drawer for the last 10 years or so I'm informed so um, yeah but that dial looks pretty good um, I'm going to scoot in a little bit closer now so we can see it close up and here you can see it close up and that dial is actually really really nice in decent condition it does have mar some marks on the sub dials right around you'll note the center area and I can guarantee that these will have occurred during removal of the sub register hands when uh, previously worked on because somebody has um, has gone and removed these without adequate dial protection because the rest of the dial is very very clean the rest of the sub dial is very clean and unmarked that's the only possible explanation that somebody has has gotten something like a, a presto tool or similar under these hands and it's caused a little bit of scoring and scratching on the sub dials which is a little bit of a shame something that should never happen um, I mean sometimes these small sub dial hands are very very close very tight down to the dial and when that's the case you need uh, hand levers which are very thin and able to get underneath while still using something like a plastic sheet to protect them so just going to turn that upside down and hold it so we're not pressing on the hands you can see the movement a little more clearly there we'll just take a look at the edge and it looks pretty good nice and tight there on the barrel no play and we've got a very lethargic balance as you can see with a little bit a little bit of play but it's not bad not bad at all compared to some and overall that's not too bad but what I do want to show you is the hand winding let's get that focused again for you so we're going to pop the stem back in which we need to do anyway to realign the hands and for those of you who know um, you don't need the explanation for those of you who don't the 6138 unlike the 6139 it has a two position stem and the mid position is for quick day and date change you rotate it anti-clockwise for the day and clockwise for the date like so uh, whereas with the 6139 you push for day and date change and also the 6138 has hand winding in addition to uh, the different day date change unlike the 6139 which is automatic only of course now the hand winding mechanism you can see I'm going to point that out to you down here you can see this little cog just underneath here and this feeds through from here and you've got this this cog which turns the ratchet wheel on the barrel and hand winds the movement now if you watch that as I try turning that hopefully you'll be able to see that that slips I'm going to zoom in tight so you can actually see that in better detail but here we are up close and you can see down here this is the ratchet this is the the wheel that turns the ratchet wheel and this and if you look through this little gap here you can also see 
the intermediate driving wheels and then of course we've got the crown over here this is all interconnected so if you watch as I turn that you can see that something is not doing what it should hopefully it will be something simple like the um, like the winding pinion on the um, in the keyless works which will be easy to source a replacement for and replace hopefully it's not a wheel that is riveted to the plate because that will become a bit more bothersome so down here on the bench in the movement holder and you can see we've got the stop and start functions you can see there the minute recorder hand jumping over and you can see additionally that it will reset Oops. if I can I think I'm a little bit misaligned there there we go I was a bit misaligned with the pusher and you can see that that resets to the 12 o'clock position on all hands so it's very nice in that respect that's all uh, as it should be and as you could see the hour recorder and minute recorder and everything else was working additionally let's get these hands aligned Ooh, you can see the day the date snapped over nicely there let's get these hands aligned and we'll get this removed and we'll begin to strip it and I'll get the hands and dial off and then I will just show a quick time grapher clip to show where we are at currently so plastic sheet as ever to protect the dial oops we've got a slice in the sheet there let's get a fresh area of plastic sheet Let's look at that closely in a moment. I'm hoping oh, the uh, pivot looks intact. It actually looked like I'd got a bit of uh, a bit of the chronograph runner pivot in the pipe of the uh, uh, sweep seconds hand, um, which was which is always slightly worrying because the chronograph runner, of course, is the just about the hardest part to source on these movements now but it does actually look like that pivot is intact so I'm not sure what I'm not at all sure what that was uh, looking at it now it does look clear now strangely but it looked like uh, for, for a brief second I was uh, my, my heart just dropped there because I thought I thought that had actually uh, snapped the chronograph runner um, pivot but hopefully that is okay and intact righty so the next step is the same process but with the sub dial hands and as mentioned very important to use something on the dial as protection even though these are usually pressed very close to the dial and that's clearly what's caused the marks on there before that one looks like it's going to be awkward this one's come away nicely but the minute recorder hand looks to have been pressed on very very hard so 
I am going to, uh, apologies for this, but I'm going to have to go off screen because I'm going to need to get up close and personal on this one to uh, make sure I don't, first of all, don't damage the dial. And second of all, that I can see where I'm going with the hand lever. There we go. Okay, so I'll just slide that back into frame for you so you can see that was actually very tightly fitted down to the dial that had been pressed on too hard and um, to the point where it was almost touching the sub dial which is never a good never a good thing uh, there it is Just a quick inspection of the pivots and they look good. Next thing to do is to pop this out of here and undo the dial screws, remove the dial. Dial screws are found at five o'clock at the bottom down here, at 11 o'clock at the top up here. With those loosened using with my hand levers, which I actually prefer. I do have a habit of using the screwdriver that I have to hand, that I've just used to open the dial feet with, which is a terrible habit. I really shouldn't um, because this is just much better and much more suited to the task. There we go. Uh, being much wider and very thin to get under hands, it's also really, really handy for getting under the edge of dials. A dial ring. So the next thing I'm going to do is pop this on the time grapher and we are going to have a look at the performance on the time grapher after I've given it a full wind via the ratchet there. Please excuse the rubbish shaky cam footage for this, but as you can see there, we've got that on the time grapher. And that's where we are at currently. Beta is not too bad. Trace is reasonably clean, it's not too bad. But as you can see, we've got a massive loss and a pitifully low amplitude. That's dial down, dial up where very similar pendant down similar again the amplitude there you'll notice has just jumped up to 277 now as i've mentioned before with these cheap wasty time graphers that amplitude is incorrect and they have a problem detecting amplitude when it drops to a very low level typically under 100 degrees and they invariably change to reflecting a high amplitude which initially looks good if you're not familiar with this thing so that i can guarantee you is incorrect that uh, it's definitely not beating at uh, over 200 degrees amplitude there and be lucky if that's actually reaching 100 so there we've got pendant right and you can see that's gone back to 120 ish which would be about right so it's obviously it obviously dropped to around 100 or below pendant down and then pendant up I'm not expecting any great difference and final pendant left likewise so not very good performance but hopefully we can uh, we can get an improvement on that so that's just gone back up to dial down the amplitude back to 130 ish to 140 that's with a full wind so there's definitely it's definitely in need of an overhaul so let's see what we can do from here so just to demonstrate the day date changing facility while we've got this down here and visible you can see as I turn that in the mid position so you've got one two 
positions obviously that one's for the time setting so if we put it to the mid position if I turn it uh, sorry bear with me if I turn it that way you can see the date change star which moves across and flips the date over and then if I move it the other way you'll see that disappear under the day wheel and it changes the day but you can see that sometimes it's skipping it doesn't change it every time you flick it through like there it's just skipped twice and you can actually feel it if you try to turn it a little faster as well and this suggests that somebody has probably at some point tried changing the day and date while it's been in the upper quadrant of the movement it's always recommended with any movement with any mechanical or with any mechanical or quartz movement for that matter that you always change the quick set day and date when the hands are in the lower uh, quadrant of the watch the lower half of the watch